In this video, I'm going to show you an incredible armored wizard build that gives you 20 AC and almost 30 temporary hit points. For your race, choose Mark of Warding Dwarf, giving you a plus 2 to Constitution and a plus 1 to Intelligence, 60 feet of Dark Vision, advantage on saving throws against poison, and resistance against poison damage, proficiency with the Battle Axe, Hand Axe, Light Hammer, and Warhammer, proficiency with the Artisan Tool of your choice, Smith's Tools, Brew Supplies, or Mason's Tools, and the ability Stone Cunning, and Wards and Seals, as well as some Racial Spells. Stone Cunning doubles your proficiency bonus with history checks related to the origin of stonework. Wards and Seals lets you roll a d4 and add it to the result of an investigation or thieves tools ability check. For stats we'll be using point by. Roll for stats if you want but keep multi-classing minimums in mind. Our stats are going to be 8 strength, 12 dexterity, 15 constitution, 16 intelligence, 8 wisdom, and 14 charisma. For your background choose soldier, giving you proficiency in athletics, intimidation, a gaming set, and a land vehicle. Starting at level 1, your class is Cleric, giving proficiency in Wisdom and Charisma saving throws, proficiency in the skills Insight, Persuasion, some spells, and your subclass. For your spells, choose Guidance, Sacred Flame, Light, Bless, and Shield of Faith. For your subclass, choose Forge Domain. Forge Domain Clerics get the spells Identify and Searing Spite, proficiency with Heavy Armor, proficiency with Smith's Tools, and Blessing of the Forge. Blessing of the Forge lets you, at the end of a long rest, touch one non-magical object that is a suit of armor or a simple or martial weapon. Until the end of your next long rest, or until you die, the objects become a magical item, granting a plus one bonus to AC if it's armor, or a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls if it's a weapon, once per short or long rest. At second level, switch over and take your first level in Wizard. First level Wizards get some more spells and Arcane Recovery. For your spells, choose Mage Hand, Minor Illusion, Shape Water, Absorb Elements, and the Shield spell. Arcane Recovery lets you, after studying your spellbook, recover expended spell slots once per day after a short rest. The combined level of the recovered slots must be half of your wizard level rounded up, and none of them can be 6th level or higher. Second level wizards get their subclass and an extra spell. For your subclass, choose Abjuration, and for your spell, choose Silvery Barbs. Abjuration wizards get the abilities Abjuration Savant and Arcane Ward. Abjuration Savant lets you half the gold and time you must spend to copy an Abjuration spell into your spellbook. Arcane Ward lets you cast an Abjuration spell at first level or higher and gain a magical ward on yourself lasting until a long rest. The ward's hit points are twice your wizard level plus your intelligence modifier. It absorbs damage for you and when reduced to zero hit points, any remaining damage affects you. The ward can regain hit points when you cast Abjuration spells but you can only create it once per long rest. Third level wizards get some more spells, choose Feather Fall, Invisibility, and Misty Step. Fourth level wizards get another spell and a feat. For your spell, choose Detect Thoughts, and for your feat, choose Resilient. Finally, fifth level wizards get more spells. For your spells, choose Counterspell and Fireball. Now how does this build actually work? Well, with Chainmail and a Shield, your AC is 18, and by casting Shield of Faith, not only do you get a plus 2 to your AC, Arcane Ward kicks in, giving you a force field of 13 hit points. Then, cast Armor of Agathis at 3rd level, giving you another 15 temporary hit points that will damage any melee attacker that hits you for 15 points of cold damage. And with 28 extra hit points and 20 AC, the Absorb Element and Shield spell, you are truly an Armored Wizard.